Hey, doctor, these are the patients who will be calling you today. Hello? What? No, I can't remember. What? Your mother? Which one is your mother? Wait, hang on, hang on, Mr. Fang. Hello? Hello, hello? You call me what name? Why are you here? No lah! Oh my god! Huh? No? Hey, hang on ah! Hello? Hello? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 the blue one. One is enough, one is enough. Chop, 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 chop! Why don't we do it like this? You can join me on a live show where we can chat about this and that. I will try my very best to answer all of your questions. All of your questions answered by this A Doctor. Hey, so come join me on my show on the A Doctor Facebook page. Come and ask me, A Doctor this, A Doctor that. I will answer this, and I will answer that. You. Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to this episode of A Doctor. And it's really a special and meaning episode because A Doctor, as you can see with all the happy birthday sort of things, is actually one year old. Uh, I didn't even keep track, but you know, apparently I've been doing this A Doctor stuff for one year. So A Doctor is now one year old. We're going to have a birthday party. And so therefore, my producer decided it's going to be really apt and appropriate to talk about babies, making babies, because that's what birthdays are about. Hey doctor, how to make baby? And of course, we're discussing the issue of infertility. Now, all those of you like Evan Koo who wanted to sort of uh, watch me make a baby and uh, you know thought that it would start with me taking off my clothes with another female and lying on a bed, I'm so sorry. That's not how I'm going to teach you how to make a baby. There are other websites that you can refer to though, but you know, your internet service provider and your government may not approve. Just to warn you first, uh, a doctor. So um, yeah, thank you all. Uh, there are comments coming in. This topic is so interesting. Evan Koo wants a refresher how to make a baby. He has a really nice Facebook photo with uh, a nice lady by its side. Hopefully that's your wife, Evan, making babies. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. So actually, I think most of you kind of know the basics, lah. You know, infertility is like one year you've been trying and you cannot uh, make a baby. Honestly, if you want to skip right to the end, the most important thing is if you do have infertility, you need to go and see your gynecologist. Now, in order to make it interesting, the last time we had a game show, etc. Anthony Mark Brown, my producer, said, Look, why don't it's a doctor's birthday? We have to get you to make a cake. So I am a baker virgin. I've never baked before. I've never made a cake before. Alright? At least not this kind of cake. Right? Uh, the kind of cakes I make, I think cannot eat one. So I have some instructions. I have a recipe to follow. Right, and I'm gonna have to try to multitask. I'm gonna have to uh, thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Thank you, Sharon, and hello, hello to the bookworm, and hello to uh, the queen as well. Uh, thank you, Abby, for the happy birthday wishes. I'm gonna have to multitask. I'm going to do something I've never done before, which is to make a cake, and you can see all the ingredients. I have to pay attention to Facebook, and I have to talk something interesting about infertility. Okay, let's tie it all together. So the first thing I'm supposed to do, grease 6 inch pan with butter, lay parchment paper on the bottom of cake pan and set aside. Okay, <clears throat> so in order to, uh, you know, obviously the basics is you need a man, you need a woman, you need a spermatozoa which is uh, basically healthy, okay, and you need an egg which is healthy as well, okay, and then 
get together that will make a baby but actually in between as you know there's going to be lots of ingredients that you need and hopefully I do not mess this up because if I mess this up this will be a infertile cake not rice one or don't taste good or one of them so um, there are things that can get in the way right so first of all um, let's talk about bit more about the one which nobody kind of talks about which is on the male side so one of the interesting things about sperm is that it can be affected by lots of different things it can be affected by number one hormones which is my specialty okay so in order to make sperm you need testosterone in order to get testosterone you need two hormones that come from your brain up here called the pituitary okay uh, that's your luteinizing hormone LH and your follicle stimulating hormone FSH so um, in some cases of brain injury where you don't actually have these hormones, that's a problem and you cannot make sperm. Now, the sperm number okay, is one thing which is important and the sperm quality as well. So the sperm cannot be weird, weird shape, you know, it must... Actually, this looks more like a sperm. If your sperm head looks like this, right, then you have a problem. Although this is probably the better one for, for baking. Yeah, and your sperm need to swim straight and properly as well in order to pierce the egg. You cannot be swimming around in circles, right? Because if it swims around in circles, then obviously it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of used to sort of just sort of say, oh, okay, you know, if somebody comes back and they, they do a sperm analysis, so one of the things that when infertile couples, they go and see a gynecologist, typically they will get um, assessments on both sides. The lady will get an assessment and the man will also get an assessment. One thing which really um, opened my eyes is, is that actually the quality and quantity of your sperm is also a general reflection of your health, your overall health. Okay? Because if you are an unhealthy male, right, of course there will be things that you will notice la, that you're tired, short of breath all the time, that you're overweight, etc. But if your sperm analysis comes back and says that your sperm quality or your sperm quantity is not good, that should be one of the triggers for your doctor to look backwards and say, hey, why is this guy's sperm not good? And one of the things is, through this kind of testing, things like diabetes have been diagnosed. Okay? Things like high blood pressure have been diagnosed. Okay? Uh, obesity, overweight, obviously you just look at a person you can diagnose already. Okay. Cholesterol issues have been diagnosed as well. So your, your sperm actually sometimes is also a mirror of your overall health. right? So you, know, you go and see the doctor and say, I want to make baby. And then you suddenly discover, hey, my blood pressure is high, my diabetes is high, my sugar is high, my cholesterol is high. That has been actually known to happen. So grease 6-inch pan put parchment paper, set aside, preheat oven to 170 degrees Celsius. Producer, preheat the oven, please. Um, in a clean bowl, combine all dry ingredients. So, dry ingredients are one cup pasta sugar. So, I'm going to pretend to be a pro. I have a cup and I'm supposed to do one cup. And I'll fit lah. Okay. Now, obviously, one of the things I've said already which can affect men is your diabetes so your sugar level cannot be too high right but this is also true for women okay now infertility again on the female side can also be a reflection of a woman's general health and not just general health but also psychological health uh, for females I would say more so than men now again right one of the things is your gynaeco that one cup ah. I'm scared to spill this sugar la. See, that's why sugar cannot be too much Too much already, no good Is this too much? Too much ah. Oh dear, okay Thank you for that Abby And uh, I guess this is He's so pro, look Uyyo. Okay, one cup So cannot be too much, right? Because got diabetes So it's the same Of course uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, all these kind of things, they kind of combine in a female who say is overweight or obese, okay, um, and it can give rise to problems with ovulation, meaning that your, your, your 
ovary cannot release the egg. Egg not released, sperm come, meet nobody, baby cannot happen. Okay, so that is also one of the factors, and so again leading on to a woman's general health. Psychological health also can happen. One of the reasons that ovulation does not happen, okay, is due to brain stress. Brain stress can actually lead to reductions in pituitary hormones. Pituitary hormones get suppressed, and therefore the LH and FHH in a female, the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, which in the male causes sperm to come out, in the female causes the egg to come out. And if that doesn't come out because of psychological stress, okay, then again you have an anovulatory cycle. Anovulatory means that the uh, the uh, the egg doesn't come out. Right? So again, that would be a missed opportunity. Uh, what am I supposed to add next? Uh, cake flour. I think this is a cake flour. Okay. Um, so again, you know, there is this other factor as well. So it's not just about the uh, uh, sort of uh, physical part of it. Right? It's not just about having a, a good, healthy body, etc. The psychological component, especially for a female, um, you know, I, I don't know if you may have gone through or experienced this before and I'm actually making a big mess and spilling the flour all over the place. Um, but women can sometimes, uh, you know, miss or have delayed periods during times of stress, such as say during exams. Okay, So again, you need cake flour, you need psychological health. Uh, to be good in order for you not to have an ovulatory cycle. Uh, did I say that right? In order for you to, to make a baby, lah, basically. I mean, your ingredients are important, but you know, the mixing bowl that you have is also important. So your bowl, your uterus, your fallopian tubes must not be blocked as well. So, I'm so sorry. I think I've just made a big mess here, uh, guys. Um, so another component that you need... Ooh, wow. Lots of powder. Okay. Uh, this is supposed to be cocoa powder. No, no, cocoa powder half cup. Oh, this is half cup. Yeah, this is already a half a cup. Yay. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend to be a pro. Okay. Subtitles got interpretation error. Egg versus egg. Yeah, la. My Malaysia language, low FSBI, right? Um, yeah, why got subtitles? Take away the subtitles, ah. Egg versus egg. This is Facebook doing it. This is FB, not. This is FB, not uh, a doctor. Okay. Ah, we have a question. Doctor Alex, if we miscarriage, then stop getting pregnant. Can this be classed as infertile? Um. So, if you can get pregnant and then have a subsequent miscarriage, that's not actually classed as infertility. Infertility means you cannot even get pregnant in the first place. If you get pregnant and then you have a miscarriage, that's a separate disorder and a separate episode of a doctor. Okay, there are many causes for miscarriage. Some of them overlap with infertility, okay, but you have to sort of uh, do it. Uh, uh, it's a whole, whole, whole different topic. Lah. So now, cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. For this half piece of food. Okay. Ah. Okay, so there are also some other factors, more false factors, which you need, which is your baking soda, your salt, and your... What was the third one? Baking powder, okay, and that's certain hormones that sometimes can get in the way, right? One of them, as an example, is your thyroid hormone, because if your thyroid hormone is malfunctional, either too high or too low, right? Like baking powder, you don't have enough, cannot make cake. If you have too much, also cannot make cake, okay? Or you can make cake, but it's just not going to work out properly. It's not going to be a nice cake, okay? So. Uh -huh. So, um, what you need to, to actually have is a balance. And so, one of the things that if you see your gynecologist 
and you tell him that you're infertile, one of the things that they would typically measure apart from your diabetes, cholesterol levels, etc., blood pressure, is also your thyroid hormone levels. Okay? And if your thyroid hormone levels are not um, uh, within range, okay, that can cause infertility. If your uh, you are making such a big mess, I told you I've not baked before. Okay, make babies can. I got three. Okay, yeah, I got the proof. Um, yeah, so um, um, that's one. Another hormone which is interesting is prolactin. Okay, prolactin comes from up in your pituitary. It's actually a breastfeeding hormone, and it causes a woman to uh, get breast milk. Now, sometimes in certain disorders, <coughs> sorry, sometimes in certain disorders, it comes out wrongly. That means there's no baby, there's no need to make breast milk, but it comes out. Okay, and then the lady will sort of have infertility as a result. And one of the signs, of course, is that they don't get periods. They may actually start to get breast milk as well. So that's another hormone that needs to be measured in um, couple, which is infertile. Okay. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the small hormones that, that you need to uh, uh, get correct, right? Um, and it's very interesting because in some males, very rarely, they can get prolactin uh, problems as well. And then they suffer with decreased libido, uh, ejaculation problems, erection problems. And sometimes, in very rare occasions, they also can make milk, which is very disturbing. Um, but yeah, another rare disorder. And then the thyroid disorders also can uh, occur in uh, the male. Okay? Dr. Alex, is this your first time baking a cake? Yes, this is my first time caking a bake. Okay. So, wet ingredients. Um, wait. Combine the dry ingredients, add the wet ingredients and mix well. Okay, so, I need vegetable oil, half a cup a cup which is actually unfortunately full of powder I need half a cup of this oh this is exactly half a cup oh nice okay, so half a cup of vegetable oil half a cup of sour cream So yeah, in a way, making a baby needs all of these things to blend together and come together right time, right place. Um, yeah. So as I was saying before, the um, tools that you need, okay, the bowl, okay, if your bowl is cracked, if your bowl is uh, chipped, okay, if your bowl is uh, I don't know covered in cling film. Again, this is not going to work. So, besides hormonal problems, oh, I haven't, I haven't added in the egg yet. I have to add in the egg. Yeah. Besides hormonal problems, what you also need to be aware of is that if there are structural problems, i.e. Uh, things which are blocking the sperm from getting to the egg, things are, which are blocking the egg from coming out, or things which are stopping the um, egg and the sperm from attaching the uterine wall so you need to have uh, a healthy uterus healthy fallopian tubes um, healthy testes etc as well and what that actually means is that if you've had previous injury for example to these areas due to say surgery <coughs> sorry or even previous injury due to for example um, infections Right in your vagina, infections in your uterus. Okay, this can actually cause uh, problems. And again, you need to see your gynecologist. We'll do a scan. We'll do different investigations to sort of uh, make sure that is not the case. Okay. Oh, I haven't added a few things. Need to add vanilla. Vanilla don't want to come out. Or how am I going to get it to come out? Use a spoon, I think. Okay, so um, once again, uh, that is another issue with uh, infertility that basically 
needs to uh, happen. Okay. And ultimately, I guess your gynecologist will go through checking your anatomy, making sure that uh, you know. What else do I need? To do cider vinegar. Where's the cider vinegar? Where's the cider vinegar? I don't know. I think I added it already. Have I added it already? I think I must have. All right. And half a cup of boiling water. Okay. It's a pity you all don't have a camera looking down here and you can see the mess that I'm making. I don't know whether this, this don't look like any cake that I've ever seen before. But it looks like something I've seen before, honestly. Yeah. Every morning I, I do this. No, just kidding. Um, Okay, yeah, so um, um, what, what I would say uh, is that you, you do need to go to a gynecologist. Once in a while, your gynecologist will refer you to an endocrinologist or physician like me if he picks up things like diabetes or prolactin problem or thyroid problem. Or in fact, if there are blockages here, there and everywhere, um, I shouldn't say here, there and everywhere, but if there are blockages, then he'll discuss with you different uh, options. Now, many a time, right, as many as 1 in 10 couples have got fertility issues. Many a time, none of these uh, problems arise. And then uh, the next question then becomes um, treatment. So in terms of treatment, there are many different ways. Lah. There's medicines that you can take to help you to ovulate. Okay? Um, there's also, of course, uh, assisted reproduction where there are different techniques. For example, uh, harvesting out the egg. Right, um, uh, so and and fertilizing it outside of the womb, i.e., IVF, which is quite famous, I think. But there's also uh, um, sometimes where you actually take the sperm and introduce it, okay, into the um, take take a sperm sample, gather all the healthy sperms, the one that can swim fast, the one that can swim in a straight line, the one that don't have a funny shaped head, okay, um, and then you can inseminate the female, which means introduce the sperm into the female. These are all different options. All of them, mind you, are actually um, not cheap. All of them are basically available in Malaysia. But I must say that you are looking at five-figure sums for fertility therapy. Okay. Um, yeah. IVF success rate. So this, again, I don't have uh, the data. I uh, can't get it off the top of my head. I think it depends on the um, individuals. It depends a bit on your uh, uh, luck, I guess, at the end of the day. Right, have I put everything in already? Yeah. And um, I don't have the figures, but certainly it's never ever 100% successful, as uh, uh, you may know. And then sometimes, May end up with it being hyper successful because it's not uncommon for IVF to result in multi multiple babies in one pregnancy, it's either twins or triplets, etc., which is again a different uh, problem in itself. Now, I am supposed to pour, so now I'm supposed to pour the sperm into the egg. No, uh, what I'm supposed to pour this into this, I think. Right. Am I? Or into the pan there. Okay. So how does that look? It looks a bit better now compared to what it was before. Hey, why I go in Greece too? There's enough here just for one. Hey, actually, uh, to be quite honest, this baking thing not as hard as it looks lah. I don't know lah. It comes out how it will be. Okay. Anthony Mark Brown. How do I improve testosterone levels? Um, okay. So definitely in terms of testosterone levels, things like your overall health. Don't smoke. Right? Reduce your alcohol intake. Don't drink, in fact, if possible. Okay. Um, things like zinc, things like uh, red meats, can improve your uh, testosterone levels. Getting enough sleep can improve your testosterone levels. 
removing psychological stress also can improve your testosterone level. So like in females, right, psychological stress can cause an ovulation. That means that the egg doesn't come out. Testosterone can also be depressed uh, whenever you don't, uh, 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 when you have psychological stress as well. Physical stressors. Uh, you have to understand that your reproductive system, the ability of a male and female to make a baby, right, at the end of the day, okay, kind of has this background check to sort of say, hey, wait, 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 before we set up all these hormones and all these different things to make a baby, is, am I getting the sense, your body will ask itself, am I getting the sense that a pregnancy and making a baby will result in an uh, environment where he gets, this baby gets enough food, gets a good uh, quality of life or not. Because being severely underweight, so like marathon runner, anorexic, both males and females, your hormone levels can actually shut down. Meaning that your, your body is like, wow, I'm under so much stress, I'm running 42 km every day, right? It is well known that these people who over-exercise, they don't have reproductive hormones. They don't have, they have very low levels of testosterone, okay? They have very, very low levels of female hormones as well. In fact, they don't have periods, okay? So again, this is another thing, being too underweight. Being too overweight also is a problem because then you have all your high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity in itself can affect your uh, testosterone uh, as well, okay? Uh, I think Dr. Alex, should stay as a doctor lah. Baking career should take away. You haven't eat cake yet, Sharon. Ah, uh, don't so fast go and say people cake not nice leh. Ah, uh, you bring your mama. I I feed you this cake. Then only you say lah. Okay. Yeah lah. I made a mess, but you know everybody makes a mess. Okay. Can frequent yeast infections? Thank you, Jai, for the question. Can frequent yeast infections affect fertility? For females, yeah. So, uh, do we have yeast in this cake? No, that's for making bread, right? Okay. Yeah, of course. Frequent infections, not necessarily just yeast infections, but multiple infections. Number one, it can cause scarring. Scarring, which will block the passage of egg, block the passage of sperm. So it can occur for uh, both sides. Inflammation, right? When it's inflamed, it's hard for your egg and sperm combi to stick to the walls uh, as well. All right. And if you're having frequent infections, if you're having an infection, then definitely intercourse is not going to be something which is uh, on your mind. So thank you, Jai. Of course, that is a uh, risk factor for uh, infertility. Okay. So does excessive weightlifting change the hormones in women? I mean, what do you mean by excessive? Everything excessive, um, definitely is no good. Over-exercise is no good, all right? Excessive weightlifting, um, I don't know, in women, in men, perhaps if they use external steroids to boost up their muscles to appear like Arnold Schwarzenegger, if they use external testosterone, uh, that can affect. Uh, in women, I guess the same would also <coughs> uh, sort of uh, apply. So any over-exercising, okay, will tell your body, hey, look, this, this body is already struggling to cope. It's like super tired all the time and, and over-exercising already. So why should it even make a baby, right? The Ndiri also cannot tahan already. Why you want to go and add on uh, an extra uh, burden? You can think about it uh, that way. So, um, okay. I think I've managed to answer most of the questions. Uh, or in grease pan. Bake in oven for one hour or until toothpick comes out. I got toothpick. Oh, oh, toothpick comes out clean when poked into the middle. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, I need to pass this, I think, to my lovely assistant. Go and Bake for one hour. Okay, everyone, see you in one hour. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that was just a pretend cake. Uh, that was just a pretend thing. I'm not sure whether they are actually going to bake it. There's no oven in the studio. All this, all this, oh, all this here is all bluff one, ah, fake one. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. So success stories, obviously, it's uh, how to say. Uh, <coughs> obviously, it's a, a joy lah for any couple that that uh, I treat. They're able to um, uh, get a baby, okay? and it's always very nice when you see them through the pregnancy, etc. Uh, I do treat women with uh, gestational diabetes or even frank diabetes. Uh, who become pregnant okay, and that's always very uh, good um, yeah so there, there are many success stories um, all the options all the treatments for infertility are available in Malaysia right there are multiple multiple fertility centers it's a big business now uh, in Malaysia um, yeah so find a good fertility doctor you will always always be able to uh, help you okay so um i guess that's me uh next step would be do i need to do the washing up because i've made a big big mess here <laughs> okay so um i think that's it um so final thoughts infertility one in ten couples uh, do get it there are multiple factors the first part of call if you think you have infertility uh is that you need to go and see a, a gynecologist they will do the relevant test sometimes you end up seeing somebody like me okay, and there are multiple treatments which are actually uh, available okay um, and uh, yeah if any of you later wants uh, to eat a cake uh, send in a message and we'll send my producer to your house with a cake no just kidding um, yeah so with that uh, thank you very much for joining me on this one year birthday episode of A Doctor. Let's look back at some of the highlights for the past one year. Press play. Can sweet talking cause diabetic? Ah? Cannot. Oh, this is like a medical school lecture. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Find it very hard to lose weight. Sit down and stare at the food. Today we have got a very special episode with two very special guests for you. Hey doctor, intermittent fasting okay or not? We have two guests with me today. <laughs> oh, okay. I think the carrot vegetarian. <laughs> today I'm going to be talking about snoozing to lose. Scented candles and those diffusers also help. If I remember from my biology classes, uh... so do you feel tired all the time and you want to know why? Then join me on so Cancer and Hormones. Join me on 24th August 2022, 9 p.m. on Facebook Live. Wow. Hello everybody, so this is going to be a very special episode But actually, the correct answer is B Yeah, ah. Auntie Sally ah. Correct, <laughs> right job. Thank you so much for joining me on this happy birthday episode of A Doctor. I can't believe it's been one year that I've been doing this. Okay, uh, and this candle is going to last for one year as well, I think. Yeah. Okay, everybody, make a wish what you want to happen uh, and come true. I'm going to cut the cake. And deliver to all of you. Oh, okay. Jesse Nightingale, so fast one year already. Love this program. Good job to the team and Dr. Alex. Yeah, la, Jesse Nightingale, I miss you as a CI. Come back. Um, good show, multitask, important topic while baking a cake. The cake is the important topic. Uh, 
Thank you very much for uh, your belief in me that I can multitask. Uh, I think every time I, I see your family also I have to multitask because I have to deal with so many different angles of, of you guys, okay? Sharon Tan. Um, hey, Uncle Pitney, thank you for your uh, very kind comment. Yeah, one year anniversary of A Doctor. Hope your kidney stones getting better. Okay, oh, maybe I shouldn't have reviewed that. Um, yeah, okay. So with that, uh, thank you. Now, um, our next episode, because next month is actually going to be World Diabetes Day, which actually falls on 14th of November. All right. So we're going to be celebrating World Diabetes Day on the 19th of November, where you actually pick your next Prime Minister. No, sorry. It's actually going to be on 16th of November. All right. So we don't want to clash with any important dates. Hope that it doesn't flirt. All right, and I will see you. We are still trying to think about what to do for the format of that show. Uh, hit us with some ideas if you, if you want, but I'm going to be talking about diabetes and perhaps answering your questions and perhaps sharing some fun and interesting facts. Not your usual, like, you know, what is diabetes and all that, lah, but, you know, maybe something fun and interesting because I think a lot of people know about diabetes already, but there are some things that you ought to know that you might not know. So with that, thank you very much. I think that's a goodbye from me and a good night. Bye.